Autodesk estimates that 6 million of its users are illegal and hopes to convert many of them to paying customers. Andrew Anagnost, the CEO of Autodesk, said about this, The interesting number is the 6 million plus illegal users who are actively using our software. And by the way, we know that they are using the software because we are able to track the unlicensed serial numbers and the user activity. That's a more interesting number for us long term. 4 million of those illegal users are in mature markets and about 2 million of them are in accounts that we know and have worked with in the past. One of the people using Autodesk products illegally asked on Reddit, I am using a version of Autodesk software illegally, how much trouble am I in? Well, the answer to this question actually depends on whether it is a single user or whether it is a studio or a company using illegal software. One of the designers or architects using Autodesk CAD software said about this, I worked for a company that got busted. I had only been there for two months when it happened, but was in a position to know some of the details and how the audit and the eventual punishment came down. They made the company sign up for their years of subscription for each license they deemed illegal. The subscription rate was cheaper than what can be bought through any normal retail outlet so actually the cost was closer to two years of normal subscription cost. There were no penalties or court cases. To be honest, this is not going to be the case for all studios, firms or companies. Using illegal versions of Autodesk products, since Autodesk is losing a ton of cash because of this. Their profit took a dive in 2017 when the company announced it had lost a whopping $171 million. Despite the enormity of the loss, there were no signs that the company was that affected generally speaking. In fact, Autodesk stock has risen over the last few years and it is currently at its highest per share price. This can be explained by those who understand the software industry and the effect of a change in the business model from a perpetual licensing to subscription. I personally think that it is stupid to use Autodesk products illegally if you have a studio or a company that uses design or media and entertainment software because it might damage the business or its reputation at least. Facing a software audit is a daunting process which takes time, money and resources to complete. Typically the first question the target of an audit asks is whether the audit is legitimate, closely followed by why the company has been selected for an audit. There is a debate that Autodesk can't really track illegal users and punish them, but they foster the belief that they can and do. I am not defending people who use Autodesk products illegally, also I am not associated with Autodesk in any shape or form. In addition to that, the purpose of this video is not to spread fear among those illegal users. I am not sure that Autodesk has the power they claim when it comes to these matters, but recently I came across an article listing 6 reasons why Autodesk can knock your door to let you know that you have been caught using their software illegally. Please take this information with a grain of salt because you can use your judgment and experience to filter information. So here is the list. Number 1. A disgruntled employee. One of the common ways an audit may be initiated is a report from a current or a former employee often seeking a monetary reward because Autodesk makes it easy to report a company or a licensed software through their website. Number 2. Autodesk Reporting Technology Autodesk claims that a lot of its software products have reporting technology embedded that automatically updates Autodesk about installation and usage from initial installation through various reporting periods. Therefore, if a company has 3ds Max, for example, and it reports to Autodesk that it is installed for multiple users, Autodesk compliance team can check those deployments against any registered licenses for that company. If none are found, then they claim that the legal team will likely initiate an audit and seek copyright infringement damages for any unlicensed software. Number 3. Database of Illegal Serial Numbers Autodesk claims to regularly track a licensed software by collecting illegitimate or cracked serial numbers. If these numbers are entered by a company into an Autodesk database or online profile, it may trigger an audit. Number 4. The Vendors Although it is less common, sometimes a vendor will report a company for a licensed software if a company obtains a large quota and fails to make the purchase. This type of reporting is less common for a number of reasons. 
the company could have simply purchased from another vendor and has the proper licenses it requires. And more importantly, a vendor found to be reporting potential customers would permanently alienate his business. Number 5. A social media or LinkedIn In one particular unique situation, Autodesk admitted that it targeted a company because the principal was endorsed by someone on LinkedIn for having expertise in a particular Autodesk software product and Autodesk attorney determined that no Autodesk licenses were registered to that company. This quickly became problematic because the principal did not, in fact, have expertise with Autodesk or have it installed or any of their company's machines. At that time, it was not possible to manage an endorsement from a colleague on LinkedIn. However, the company spent a significant time defending against the Autodesk audit. And this is one of the most dangerous aspects of using Autodesk software illegally, or at least if they suspect they do as a company or studio. It is going to cost a lot of time and a lot of money just to hire lawyers and get the company out of it in one piece. Because Autodesk is a monster in terms of what they can do if matters get complicated and go to court. So what information does Autodesk have regarding deployment data? If a current or former employee shared data with Autodesk, it is possible that Autodesk could have a detailed account of the deployments. This is a particular concern if a former or current employee has access or administrative rights to the network through the IT department. In addition to a report from an employee, Autodesk claims that it can obtain deployment data through organization checks built into the software. They are likely to have a record of the installation on the network. It is possible that the serial numbers may trigger an audit if they are known to be illegitimate. However, much older versions of Autodesk software may not have the same type of reporting. So it is possible that Autodesk may not be aware of these installations unless they were properly registered and recorded with Autodesk when purchased. Autodesk has significantly cut the risk of unlicensed software by making the transition from a perpetual licensing model to a subscription-based model. However, many customers continue to deploy and use older perpetual products. Many companies will note that they are authorized resellers on their website but will not necessarily set legitimate software. To avoid all of this, it is better to search for resellers in your area on Autodesk website or simply acquire the software directly from Autodesk. Although entire continent's populations, Asia in particular, are infamous for never paying full value for software, Andrew Anagnos, the CEO of Autodesk, seems to be saying that the illegal users are closer to home. Indeed, recent data from the BSA shows that the United States, though the lowest in the proportion of unlicensed software, comes up first in the local value of pirated software. At the estimated loss of $9.1 billion, it is more than both China that has 70% of illegal software, but second place in loss with $8.7 billion, and India which has a bit more control per capita with 58% unlicensed and about a third of the loss at $2.7 billion. For some companies, this is a real problem as one cut software CEO tells the heartbreak of being offered his company software years ago for a few dollars worth of local currency in the market. There are a lot of cracked copies out there and Autodesk would very much likely to get all the cash it can. But cashing individuals who download AutoCAD or any other software such as 3ds Max or Maya so they can take $5 an hour drafting jobs on freelance websites isn't worth their time. It is much easier for them to use the methods that we listed previously if they are true in the first place, of course. Basically, if you have an organization that uses cracked licenses, one of your employees can get disgruntled or indignant or greedy and get some money from blowing the whistle on you. If your company is of any size or success, then Autodesk can sue you out of business, though most of the time they settle for making you purchase the software at the retail price. So if you are a single user, you will probably get away with it. But if you have a company, I think it is very risky, even though a lot of cases show that Autodesk will not take legal action against companies because they want their money. I hope you found this video entertaining and informative. If you have something to add, please leave it in the comment section below. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. 
Thank you very much and I will see you in the next one.